Hello, my name is Emily Rose, and I teach tarot readers and the mystically minded to read Lenormand like they're talking to a friend. And today we are here with the clouds card for lightning Lenormand. We're going to go beyond keywords and give you a sense of the essence of this card so you know what it means in your bones. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the clouds is a little bit of a darker card, so we need to kind of get into the mindset a little bit. And I think the perfect way to do that is with a quote from Sylvia Plath that I think perfectly encompasses the essence of the clouds. Because wherever I sat, on the deck of a ship or at a street cafe in Paris or Bangkok, I would be sitting under the same glass bell jar, stewing in my own sour air. Ooh, <laughs> you just kind of feel that quote. And that's from the bell jar of, you know, one of her best known works here. And I think this just perfectly encapsulates it because the clouds is kind of like that bell jar. It is something that clouds perception of reality in typically a negative way. It's really hard for the person or situation afflicted to see past those clouds. Even though positive things might be happening outside of it, it doesn't matter to the person under that bell jar, underneath the clouds. Because the clouds represents doubt, uncertainty. It can represent negativity as well, confusion, ambiguity. And what this means is that the intention can't be clearly seen. And although all of these things can be remedied, it is difficult to, to remedy those things, right? If we're talking about the snake or the mice, we can usually identify the problem pretty quickly. With the clouds, it may not be just one source. The issue may not just be one thing that you can just cut out or solve. When we're talking about something like depression or doubt, right, There's that's a multifactorial thing. So it's going to take some additional finagling in order to fully understand what is causing those clouds to plume. Although the clouds can mean something different in different contexts, it tends to have a pretty universal feel to this card, which is that doubt, uncertainty, ambiguity. So if you're in a work context, in a love context, it doesn't really matter too much. It's going to kind of mean the same type of thing. The only kind of exceptions to this that I have found is if you're specifically talking about describing a person or a person's mannerisms. It can represent someone who, who smokes, someone who's gray haired, things like that. It can have those kind of um, literal interpretations of it, but for the most part, it's going to have that kind of same sour air, as Sylvia Plath put it, that carries over. When you are in a grand tableau or in a box spread, something like that, where you have cards sitting on top of significator cards, the clouds is one I really don't like to see on top of a significator card because you can kind of see that, um, that bell jar, if you will, on top of that person. What you always want to look for are the positive cards, especially the sun card, the sun parts the cloud. So you kind of want to see, especially if you're in a grand tableau, where is the sun in relation to the clouds? That's going to kind of tell you when that those clouds are going to part. And this is something I'm often asking for advice in a reading for is when the clouds appears and I'm not seeing any evidence of when it's going to part, I'm going to be asking advice questions for how to part those clouds, what needs to be addressed in order to gain clarity in that particular situation, or how to part those clouds for that person. So there you have the clouds card. If you would like to further your Lenormand skills, you are invited to take my free mini course, which you can find at emilyrosedivination.com slash mini course. In that mini course, you learn a quick five minute practice that 
walks you through how to do a daily draw with Lenormand. And there's also a free workbook included. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much.